While we're going over the first half, let's talk about the best and worst performers in the NASDAQ 100. That is the epicenter of the bear market. Tech stocks were horrendous in the first half, and weirdly, it's the best performers of this index that tell the story more than the worst ones, because they demonstrate just how little there was to like. No apples, no Googles, no semis, no softwares or services, just default names that shows you that techs become absolutely hated. Maybe so hated that I think we could see a serious bounce, as I said at the top of the show, a micron-like bounce. Witness some of the best performers of the day. They were Alphabet and Meta, even as almost all the analyst commentary was negative today. Like Micron, that made a ton of sense much higher. But down here, not so much. And if you write off a Metaverse or you write off a Google, remember, you're writing off the best managements in the industry. The biggest winner for the, for, for the first half is a great example of a non-tech triumph, and that's Vertex Pharma. Now, I've always liked Vertex ever since it came up with its life-changing cocktail for cystic fibrosis. This is a horrendous disease, and Vertex is really the only company that has made any progress in fighting this thing. They've got some other drugs in the pipeline, but nothing that promising. However, the cystic fibrosis drug managed almost $1.8 billion in sales in the first quarter alone, helping to drive a 22% increase in revenues for the period. What's crazy is that those numbers were a disappointment. Vertex only really rallied hard because AbbVie, which was sampling a possibly competitive drug, failed to show efficacy. In other words, it's not that Vertex won. It's that their chief rival lost. Without something better from its pipeline, though, I don't see the stock making the top 10 in the second half. The second best performer, Activision Blizzard, is a special situation because this video game company is being bought by Microsoft, assuming the FTC let it happen. The arbitrageurs seem very unsure about this deal. There's a wide spread between where the stock's trading and where it would go if the deal actually happens. I'm not an arbitrage guy, but I will say that the Biden antitrust regime may very well try to squash this deal because it will arguably produce too much concentration in video game publishing. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.